Thank you for joining us today for the ECCF Benefits Webinar presented by DISA Global Solutions and FormFox. The objectives for today's webinar is the advantages of using ECCF versus traditional paper, the various ECCF initiation options, and addressing common questions and hurdles. So why DISA and why FormFox? DISA is the largest TPA in the oil and gas and chemical industries, performing millions of tests annually with more than 15,000 current customers. 42% utilization rate of ECCS in 2018, up 17% from 2007. FormFox is a leading provider of software for managing substance abuse testing programs. They perform millions of transactions annually and are partners with all major labs. I'd like to introduce Brendan Brown. Brendan joined DISA in May of 2005. He's held several positions at DISA and is now the VP of Internal, Internal Operations, um, was the VP of Internal Operations and is now the Vice President of Client Relations. He oversees DISA's client support and field operations team. Thank you, Mackenzie. Uh, so why ECCF? Well, with ECCF, uh, we all win. This affects the entire chain of custody, and we'll go into a little more detail uh, about each of these milestones and the value of uh, adopting this process. Um, the digital solutions, uh, they are the way of the future. I mean, let's be honest, when's the last time anyone wrote a check or mailed an actual letter? Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it is the wave of the future, and we, we anticipate that uh, over the next five years, ECCF will absolutely be the standard uh, as it pertains to uh, drug and alcohol screening. Uh, so some of the advantages of, of using ECCF, let's talk about those specifically. Uh, you know, first, uh, we've got a testimonial in here, and this is a real-world example. Uh, DISA, not only is a third-party administrator we own, uh, a number of uh, service centers or, or collection sites that are part of our network. Uh, currently, we do about 10% of all the, the collections done uh, through DisaWorks, and the rest uh, we use through uh, third-party uh, collection sites um, like you guys. But So Mark Bro is our national on-site manager at DISA, uh, so he schedules uh, on-site testing across the country. Uh, he also manages our flagship uh, service center, which is located in uh, Pasadena, Texas. Uh, his service center there in Pasadena happens to be the number one site uh, in the Form Fox network with regards to uh, ECCF adoption. Uh, so we do 60,000 collections annually at our Pasadena Collection Center. Uh, we use ECCF for 95 plus percent of them. Uh, once we were used to the new process, uh, there was minimal negative impact on our day-to-day -day activity. We saw a tremendous benefit from fewer phone calls due to missing forms, fewer billing issues, and better tracking. Um, so, you know, some details behind that. Our own experience, let's, uh, let's talk about the impact that we, uh, that we had uh, with the, the FormFox solution here. Um, we were early adopters, um, we being the, the DISA as a whole. Uh, and I say as a whole because if you look at it from a, a TPA's perspective and a collection site's perspective, um, to be honest, it was driven from the TPA aspect. We saw such benefit on the operations side uh, and the client satisfaction that we decided in Q4 of 2017 that we were going to go paperless across our collection site network. Now, at the time, we didn't even have all of our sites set up with FormFox. Many of them were, um, but we made the choice Q4 of, uh, of 2017 that we were going to go paperless. Um, Mackenzie mentioned earlier uh, we exited uh, 2017 at 17% of our testing, uh, it, ECCF enabled or, or through FormFox. We actually started off the year uh, 2017, we were only doing 4% uh, through FormFox. Uh, so we gained some momentum there. Uh, currently we're at 42%, uh, so there's still a lot of opportunity, and a lot of it has to do with us educating our own sites and putting processes uh, in place for them to, to support our customer base, um, and uh, partner with FormFox. Uh, currently, we have three of the top five collection sites in the FormFox network, 
Um, a question a lot of you guys might have, and, and Chase will touch on it here in a little bit, is um, mobile units. Can we do ECCF out in the field? Our DISA mobile unit is number 10 uh, in ECCF use, usage uh, in the Forum Fox network. And across our entire network, uh, last year we did over 142,000 uh, ECCF tests. Um, those of you who haven't had the, uh, the pleasure of working with the, the Forum Fox team, um, it was a great experience for us. Uh, it was a change for us. Um, but outside of the experience, uh, the team itself, getting to know them, was, uh, was a real treat for us. So let's talk a minute about operational efficiencies and reducing some of the administrative burden. Um, phone calls. Uh, quick show of hands. Uh, how many of you guys have received a, uh, a call from DISA or another uh, third-party administrator for a missing form, a missing alcohol form, missing custody and control form? Uh, you probably get this uh, daily, if not uh, hourly. Um, you know, systematically, FormFox will associate the drug and the alcohol if that's required by the policy. Uh, so for the collector, they're presented with both collection events versus just one uh, or the other. Uh, additionally, from a processing standpoint, these results for the alcohol tests are available um, before the laboratory even receives uh, the urine specimen. So you, you get them processed really in, in reverse order. Uh, when you go ECCF and what you see with traditional paper. Um, uh, the MRO, uh, they require specific forms, particularly with DOT. They have to have a, uh, their copy of uh, the custody and control form. This has been a huge lift uh, for University Services, who is the, uh, the MRO uh, through DISA. Uh, when they have the opportunity to work on tests that came in electronically through FormFox, those tests absolutely report out faster on average than uh, ones used on uh, traditional CCFs. Monitoring uh, the chain of custody process. So for the, for the end users who want to know where the test is uh, throughout that chain of custody, uh, this provides a, uh, available tracking from the collection until the final report is sent to the customer. Uh, it's a great win for clients and it really puts information uh, in their hands. And so from a collector standpoint, with ECCF, once the collection's done, you're done. You're not touching this on the back end. You're not adding administrative burden uh, to your site. When you're done with this collection, you can move on and perform another one. Uh, billing. I know uh, historically, um, having, uh, again, owned collection sites and uh, having uh, several thousand in our network, uh, billing complications, um, paper forms, they require human oversight, they require input. Um, using ECCF really automates the payment process. Um, for us, we're able to turn those payments around faster. It's a much cleaner process because there's, there's fewer moving parts and things match up in our system much cleaner. Uh, ECCF orders. Um, again, much easier to reconcile because everything's tied together, the accounts associated with the, uh, the various tests that are required. Uh, and again, when you, when you think about the back and forth after the, the donors actually left the collection site between the client and the collection site looking for missing forms or additional information or affidavits, um, that virtually disappears uh, through the FormFox solution. Uh, it ensures payments. Um, are quickly processed uh, after a collection is completed. Now, I, uh, I have a feeling that many of you may have rolled your eyes just in or <laughs> as we uh, walk through this, uh, through this slide. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we understand that this is a, a challenge uh, for the, the industry as a whole. Um, DISA is working towards a solution to um, significantly accelerate the payment process for uh, all of our collection site partners. Uh, we are going to partner with Form Fox in that effort, and uh, we plan to, uh, to to roll this out to the collection site community uh, at some point in uh, in 2019. One of the other uh, the benefits of adopting uh, the, the Form Fox uh, solution and ECCF is it's an easy way for you to promote your collection site in DisaWorks. 
Uh, DieselWorks is our platform. It's what all of our customers log in to, to manage their account. Uh, we've got over 15,000 distinct customers uh, that have access to that. Um, it also opens up opportunities as they go in to order ECCF through uh, the DieselWorks platform um, to tack on additional screens, uh, other occupational medical screens like physicals and, and things of that nature. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, everyone uh, on the call here has a has a vested interest in seeing how many services you can provide for each of the, each donor that walks into your clinic. Because um, at the end of the day, that's uh, that's really where uh, you guys will see the the greatest value is being able to uh, to add additional services. And through the DeSource platform, uh, we promote that, and particularly with sites that are uh, have adopted the FormFox solution um, to see. To, to rather display additional services to our customers that they can uh, take advantage of at your site. Uh, the other thing uh, that we've done here recently, <clears throat> over the last couple of months, uh, DISA has rolled out a new user interface uh, to those 15,000 customers. Uh, and this is for our uh, contractor clients. Again, just a new look and feel. Uh, it's a lot more current, a little more intuitive. Uh, we are going to take uh, several passes at the uh, user interface to see how we can enhance that to really um, um, bring a, uh, a, a more current uh, solution to our clients. And one of the ways we're going to do that uh, is by redoing our collection site search screen. Uh, so ECCF adoption, uh, as it pertains to our the collection sites within our network, is going to be a very predominant uh, factor in that algorithm that will get sites promoted uh, based on the number of services and whether or not you uh, provide those services electronic. Uh, and then we'll match that up with specific customer profiles. Um, our clients, uh, they've been demanding a more electronic option uh, to support their business for quite some time. Uh, they want access to better data uh, and a more current solution. And we feel like Forum Fox is, uh, is definitely the provider that can bring that to them. So I hope uh, everybody enjoyed this por portion of the, uh, the webinar uh, and found it very useful. Uh, and thanks again for joining us today. Thank you, Brendan. I would now like to introduce Chase McCourtney. He is the Product and Operations Manager at Forum Fox. Chase joined Forum Fox in March of 2016 and he oversees all major software deployments to clinics nationwide. Thank you, Mackenzie. So for my portion of the webinar, what I want to talk about is how you can get started with ECCF. And I'm going to walk you through various ways to start, especially if someone walks in with just a paper chain. But before we get to the paper chain conversion, I really want to talk to you all about dissecting some of the various authorization forms that you might see. For example, some people might walk into your clinic with a form that looks like this. This is a form that is generated in the DISA work system by a DISA client. They can choose the clinic that they want to send their individual to. But the two things I really want to call out on this authorization form are this barcode and the number. You'll see these located in the top right-hand corner of authorization forms that are produced by DISA, as well as a FormFox logo. Anytime you see someone walk through your doors with one of these, it's important that you scan that barcode or enter the authorization number, and that will launch the workflow in FormFox, and your collectors and staff will be guided through that process um, th the entire way. You'll notice some other things that are important here on the authorization form. We always put the employer information as well as test information, so you'll have a little bit of detail about the donor. Services to be performed. It's really important that you pay attention to this so that you don't miss anything. However, once you scan this barcode, for example, if the patient has more than one service to be performed, like this individual has an alcohol test as well as a urine collection, scanning this barcode will walk you through both of those. And FormFox will remind you when you finish the first event to then also do the second event before you dismiss that individual to go about their day. You might see a form that looks like this. This is an AWSI-generated authorization form. 
you'll notice that it looks a bit different, but it has the most common features that are the most important. FormFox logo, which is indicating to you that the, the events ordered for this individual need to be conducted using the FormFox workflow system electronically. You'll also notice that there are authorization barcodes and numbers here. This one has a non-DOT alcohol test, a drug test that is a hair, non-DOT, as well as a non-DOT urine. I want to show you what the FormFox generated authorization form looks like. This is a form that's generated from our website, formfoxorder.com. There's a lot of small TPAs out there or just um, individual employers that use our site to place orders. They can look up your collection site. Since you're FormFox enabled, all of you will show up there. If you're not currently using FormFox, later on in the presentation, we'll talk to you about what it takes to get started. So you'll notice here, obviously, a big FormFox logo in the left-hand corner. And of course, the most important piece is that barcode with the authorization number. This is your key to success. If someone walks in with one of these forms, you know that your job just got a whole lot easier. It's also best practice to instruct your staff members who might be working at the check-in desk to always ask the individuals that come in if they have an authorization form with them. They may not have it printed out because a lot of people are joining the modern age and they're texting or emailing the authorization form. So by you asking the individual if they have one, that will trigger in their brain to pull it up on their phone or through their email if it's not printed out. So keep that in mind. Not everyone will have a printed copy. They might have a digital copy on their smartphone. So now that we've dissected some of the authorization forms, I want to talk about how you can begin a test if someone walks in with the authorization form. If you're a FormFox user, you'll notice on the left of my screen, there's an icon on the FormFox page once you log in. And it looks just like this. We have the paper authorization form and the mobile version. So if someone walks in, you simply click on that icon, and that will take you to this screen where you're looking for the donor's test. If you're using an iPad, you can scan this barcode with the front-facing camera. If you're using a desktop version, you're most likely equipped with a barcode scanner. So you can either type in this number or scan it and then hit the search button. Once you hit the search button, it's going to search the FormFox database for the patient uh, on the form that you just scanned, and it will bring up this view. You'll simply click on the donor name here, and that will launch you into the FormFox workflow for that individual. This is what step one of the collection information looks like. You'll notice that this test is clearly denoted as a federal collection. You'll also notice that all of the donor information is already pre-populated. That's the beauty of the pre-order. A lot of people that are using the DESA work system are placing digital orders ahead of time, and the more people that place orders, the fewer keystrokes you have to do at the clinic. All you have to do in this situation is verify that the donor's name is spelled correctly, that their birthday is good, and that their phone numbers are denoted clearly. So pre-order equals fewer data entry points at the clinic. We push the pre-order very hard at FormFox with all the clients we work with, and I know DISA is doing the same as they're getting more and more of their customers using the DISA work system. So what happens if the donor shows up or an individual walks into your clinic without an authorization form. I know it happens every day. No matter how hard we push people to order, there's always going to be some people that just want to stick to the paper chain. So I want to talk to you about three ways that you can solve that problem. First, we're going to talk about how to convert a paper chain. The second item we'll address is how to use the favorites list in FormFox. And then finally, how to start a test just by using the lab account number. So first of all, let's talk about what we can do with those so annoying paper chains that people bring in. There's three options you have. We just discussed them. You could click on this icon, the five-part paper chain. You could start by a lab account number, or you can use your favorites list. And I'm going to walk you through each of those different scenarios now. So let's assume that the person coming into your clinic today brings a paper chain. They present themselves at the front desk. You always ask, do you have an authorization? They say, no, but my employer sent me in with this CRL or Quest or Psychometrics paper chain. So don't be alarmed. 
you don't have to stick to the status quo and just take the paper chain and fill it out. I'll walk you through what to do. First step of converting a paper chain is to click on this icon for the five-part paper chain. Once you click on that, you'll be presented with a list of laboratories that your collection site is enabled for. So you'll look at the chain of custody. You'll notice that maybe it's a Quest chain or it might be a CRL chain. Let's pretend that this patient brings in a CRL chain of custody form. When they come in, you can click on that five-part paper chain icon and you'll be directed to this screen where it asks you to scan the specimen ID number from the existing form. So you'll look and we show you exactly where to find it. You would then type in that number here and hit search and then it's going to ask you to enter the account number. The account number is found in section A underneath the employer section and with CRL accounts they're usually have multiple sections separated by dots. Some of them have numbers, a lot of them have a combination of numbers and letters. It's important that you type in the entire account number and then hit continue. Once you hit continue, it will take you to this step, which is where you would type in the donor demographic information, first name, last name, as well as an ID, and then you'll choose your procedure and go ahead and start. I know that a lot of you do a lot of work with psychomedics for your hair collections, which is great. The psychomedics conversion is also very simple. It's actually a little bit easier. All you have to do is locate the client code, which is always in the center of the paper chain. You'll type that client code right here in the client code box, type in your donor information, hit search, and that will immediately launch you into the psychomedics hair collection workflow in FormFox. If you have a Quest Diagnostics paper chain, it's also very simple. You can use your barcode scanner to scan the barcode. If the barcode is faded because the chain might be a little old, you can simply just type in that number here. Put it into the custody control form barcode box, type in your donor information, hit the search button, and you're off to the races. Converting paper chains is extremely easy. The benefit that comes from it is you don't have to do all the rework. You don't run the risk of the chain getting to the laboratory and the accessioning staff not being able to tell if it's a 5 or an S. You don't run the risk of not checking the temperature in range box or getting the signatures. So it's worth taking the time to tear up that paper chain, go through the electronic process so that when you're actually done with the collection in FormFox, you're done. You don't have to worry about phone calls or emails or that ever annoying fax that comes from the MRO saying, we never got our copy. Another way to leverage FormFox more fully is to engage your favorites list. In late 2018, we made an addition, an update to the favorites list that made it more dynamic. I call it the smart favorites list. Instead of just being a free form field, we use data to build your favorites list for you. Every time you do a collection in FormFox, we recognize the lab account number that you're using. Once you hit the minimum threshold of using that lab account number four times in 90 days, we will automatically add that account to your favorites list. So let's digest that a little bit and unpack it. Let's say, for example, you're working in Pasadena and you see Javier's Tire Shop and they send people in to you every day for pre-employments, post-accidents, etc. It's not a normal day if someone from Javier's doesn't walk into your clinic. So you know that you've collected for them so many times, but Javier doesn't currently place orders. Let's say they always just send their individuals in with paper chains, but you see them so much that you know they're on your favorites list. Instead of converting the paper chain like I just showed you to do, all you have to do is click on the favorites list icon that will display a list of all of the accounts that have met the criteria to be on your favorites list. We store the top 50. We have found that 50 accounts generally account for over 80% of the collects that take place at an individual clinic. So simply click on the icon for favorites list, choose the company off the list, hit search, and it will take you right to a collection step where you enter the donor information and you can proceed with the test. It's so easy to use. I would encourage all of you to take a look at your favorites list today and see which companies have met the criteria to be on there. And the next time someone comes in from one of those companies, 
don't do the collection on paper, try using your favorites list to get started. So let's talk about another very easy method to convert a paper chain, and that is by using the lab account number. In the first discussion, we talked about where to locate the lab account number on a paper chain. So if you don't want to click the five-part paper chain conversion, and you know exactly where on the chain to find the lab account number, you just click on the beaker icon, type in the lab account number off the chain, hit the search button, FormFox will validate that that lab account is valid. So you'll click on the lab icon, pick the lab that you're working with, enter the lab account number, go through the lookup process to make sure that is valid. Once it is valid, you'll be brought to this step where you locate the donor test by typing in the donor social security number or employee ID or driver's license, whichever identifier you choose, and then you'll simply hit this create new test button. Converting paper chains is so easy. The more you do it, you'll build up your muscle memory and it will just become second nature to you. Once you've entered your lab account number, you'll notice that in this section you still do need to capture the donor evening phone and daytime phone number because it wasn't pre-ordered. If it was pre-ordered, this section would be filled out in its entirety. Okay, so let's talk about some of the benefits that come to clinics that use FormFox. One of the best things is for any test that's pre-ordered, we're going to send the ordering party the collection data and the image back. That means for every test that DISA orders, they will get the MRO copy sent to the MRO University Services, which means that the MRO shouldn't be calling you asking for chains. We also send the ATF forms to the third-party administrators that order those through FormFox. So less calls means more time serving patients, which means a decreased wait time at your clinic. And we all know that wait time is one of the biggest KPIs that we care about. Another huge benefit of using FormFox is the elimination of data entry at the clinic level. There's nothing more annoying than having to write on a paper chain and go find a pen that actually has ink and taking your time to write legibly so that the accessioners at the laboratory can read it, that the MRO can read it. You're just going to have fewer mistakes. It's really important. FormFox increases the quality and the integrity of every single event that is conducted in our system because every chain of custody is legible, they're clear, and it's a wizard-driven process, which means that you can't go forward or back without filling in all the required information. One of the common things that people will say to me when I talk to them is they'll say, Chase, you know what? Paper is faster. And I would like to disagree with that. We've done time studies, and some of our most advanced collectors have proven to us time and time again that the more they use FormFox, the faster it is, and they can actually get through as many electronic collections as they can paper collections. The other time and situation in which FormFox will save you time is all the rework that comes in the form of having to fill out an affidavit because you didn't capture a donor signature or you didn't mark the temperature and range box or having to deal with an MRO that's requesting that you fax a chain again answering all those emails and phone calls that come in from TPAs because they're getting pressure from their trucking clients that want to know status updates every hour on the hour until there's a decision that they can make. So the more you use FormFox, you'll build up your muscle memory, it will be faster, and there's a lot less rework to do on the back end. So just to recap, we've put together this little graphic that will help you know when to use FormFox. On the left-hand side, we have a display of all the laboratories that are set up with FormFox. If you see a lab in that list that you know you collect for, but you don't use FormFox for that lab, give our team a call. You can call the implementation team, option seven on the right, we have their number, and they can get you turned on for those laboratories. So working our way from left to right, obviously the easiest way to use FormFox is if someone comes in with an authorization form on their phone or printed out or an email. You can always convert a five-part paper chain for any of these labs. Once you've started converting paper chains and you know where to locate the account number, you can always just start by this lab beaker icon by clicking that, choosing your lab, entering the account number. You can also do breath alcohol tests in FormFox as well as DOT exams. You can click on these icons to start from scratch. If you're not currently set up to do those um, 
tests electronically, the BATs and the exams, please reach out to our training team and we can get you trained and ready to be able to do those events electronically. Okay. Thank you, Chase. Um, we will now be addressing common questions and hurdles. Okay. Thank you, Mackenzie. So as you registered, we captured some of the most common questions and hurdles that you encounter, and I wanted to take the time to address those individually. The first item that I wanted to address is those of you that feel like you might need a little bit more training on FormFox and you have a question about where to get it, that's a great question. Over the last six months at FormFox, we've put a lot of effort into building out what we call our training center. You can access the FormFox Training Center directly from our website by visiting formfox.com. In the top right-hand corner of the page, you'll notice this training link. We've built out a plethora of training simulations that will walk your collectors through how to do every single service in FormFox electronically. The benefit of the Training Center is you'll see on the left-hand side we have our training courses. There's a number of them. It's important that you visit this site often because we always post upcoming updates here, quick tips, you know, things that are coming down the pipe, things that we're developing and working on. These simulations that we have developed are perfect for a new hire. If you have someone that has already gone through their collector training, but they need to learn how to use FormFox, we will walk them through how to use our system step by step, and they're actually going to be interacting with the product. For all intents and purposes, it's as if they were already logged in and were going through a temperature out of range situation or perhaps a shy bladder. Some of those tests that we encounter that tend to be a little bit more difficult, we break those down for you and make it very easy. We have a dedicated implementation team here at FormFox of five individuals that are product experts. You can reach them by dialing the number here, 877-376-3691 and hitting option seven, they're very eager to get you the training that you need. So please visit the training center. I don't want anyone to ever feel like they don't know how to use FormFox. We've spent a ton of resource in building out um, training courses that will help you feel confident in using the product. The second question we wanna talk about is where do I get the equipment that I need to use FormFox? And if I'm not already using FormFox at my clinic, how can I get started? So I want to show you, again, on our website, at the very bottom, we have these helpful links, and one of them takes you to the recommended, recommended equipment page. If you're using FormFox with a computer, there's two ancillary devices that you need to have hooked up. The first is this barcode scanner, and we recommend the Motorola LS2208. The second thing is this signature pad, and we're compatible with the ePad signature pad. You use that to capture donor signatures, collector signatures. If you're doing exams, you're going to be capturing you know, a DOT driver signature as well as a physician. Um, these things hook up to the computer via the USB port. You can find them on Amazon. We have links on our website that will take you to manufacturers and vendors of these two products. The other thing that you can do with FormFox is use our application, which you can download from the Apple App Store, and you can use it with an iPad. A lot of people ask if we're compatible with Android or other tablets, and the answer to that is no. Currently, we're only compatible with the iPad, but the iPad is great because you can use it. It's mobile. You can take it with you out to different on-site collections that you have to do. You can move around the clinic very easily. One thing to know about the iPad is you have to have good Wi-Fi if you're using the, the iPad. We found really great success with our on-site collectors that have a Verizon jetpack. They take out on the boat with them or the rig, wherever they're going. You also need to have an AirPrint compatible printer, which just means that you can hook up your iPad and your printer to the same Wi-Fi network. Um, you always have to have a printer when using FormFox to print out the documents. So if you have more questions about equipment or how to get started, I would invite you to reach out to one of our dedicated sales team members. They're great, they're product experts, and this is what they do all day, every day. They talk to clinics about using FormFox and how to get set up. If you're currently using FormFox and have questions about 
you know, what's the best way to add another workstation to my clinic? Or maybe you are facing space difficulties and you don't have a lot of counter space. We can talk to you about options of how to integrate the iPad into your workflow. Feel free to reach out to the sales team at any time with any questions that you might have. The third common question that we got is, what do I do, Chase, if I don't have great internet connectivity? Can I still use FormFox? Well, we all know that FormFox, it is indeed a web-based application, so that means you do have to have internet. You can't use it in an offline mode. So I already talked a little bit about using a jetpack if you're going out on-site. One common complaint that we hear from on-site collectors, especially if they're going out to oil rigs or refineries, they might be doing the collections in a concrete building that's, you know, ballistic proof and it's really hard to get signal. They have found great success by taking a jet pack with them, you know, a little MiFi that you can get from your cell phone providers. We have on our website this diagnostic speed test, which is found in the bottom of the FormFox homepage under the helpful link section. You can do a speed check, and I recommend that you do this at your clinic if you're experiencing any slowness or lag with FormFox. We have two links. I'd recommend the second one, this Internet Connection Speed Test by Measurement Lab. Clicking on that will take you out to a third-party site where you can test your Internet connectivity at the clinic where you're working. And as you go through this diagnostic speed test, you'll see results. We recommend that your download speed be between 25 and 50 megabytes. If you can hit that threshold, you shouldn't have problems operating the FormFox system. If you're below that threshold, I'd recommend that you first consult with your internal IT department about your network and see if there's anything they can do to increase your bandwidth. If you have further questions about internet connectivity or lag or slowness, please reach out to our technical support team. We've got a team of seven individuals there that are eager to help serve you and make sure that you're having the best experience possible with our product. Let's talk about why would you convert to an electronic process if the customer brought in paper? That's a good question. Some people feel like, well, the employer sent them in with a paper chain. I need to do this on paper. And to be a bit candid, no matter what you do in FormFox, no matter what lab it's for or what test it is, the chain that prints out a FormFox is going to look exactly like the chain that the customer brought in as far as the required fields. So it's really no different as far as the output. But what is different is the input. The quality of the data that you put into FormFox is going to be much better than anything that you handwrite on a paper chain. So just to recap, you can convert that chain by clicking on this icon, picking your laboratory, and working through the process electronically. So let's, to wrap things up on the hurdles, who can you talk to about setup and best practices? For that, I already mentioned our FormFox sales team. They can be reached at this 833 number. If you're experiencing any technical support, please feel free to reach out to our support team. And it's best if you can call them while you're in the middle of the test so that they can give you guidance throughout the process rather than calling when it's over. And I know that's not always possible, especially when you're dealing with a patient, but we find that there's much better outcomes if we can guide you through whatever you're experiencing while you're actually experiencing it. I'd like to talk about our team for just a minute on the support side. They are the most seasoned group of individuals that we've ever had. We have seven team members. One of them is a supervisor, and we have six um, teammates on that team. Five of the six have already reached their level two support, which means that they are pretty much FormFox experts. Two of the six are working to their level three certification, and one has only been here for about four months, and he's currently working toward level two. So I'm very confident in their abilities, and I would invite you to please reach out to them with any questions that you might have. If you don't have this number written down, I would recommend that you do so. This is the best way to reach our technical support. We also have an email box that we man. We manage that queue every day. So if you if it's not something super urgent, you can always email support at formfox.com. If it's a more urgent matter, I'd highly recommend giving us a call. Thank you, Chase, and thank you, Brendan. We um, would like to thank everybody for joining us today. And if you have any questions, 
feel free to reach out to Brandon or Chase at the um, contact info provided on your screen. We will also be uh, sending this recording to you um, via email. Thank you.